Now for global business updates, Rotus Odiri joins us. Good morning, Rotus. Good morning, Dr. Abati. Good morning, Vimbai. Good morning, uh, Rufai. There's so much going on in the business. We have to put this stuff down. Uh, so just a few stories. Uh, we kick off with the Federal Reserve, as expected, holding rates uh, in place. Uh, uh, but the key thing here was Jerome Powell uh, saying that the forecast, as far as the Federal Reserve's dot plots, what its uh, forward guidance for the future, they're still going to, they're still looking at those three rate cuts uh, this year, and that propelled the markets. Let's listen to Jerome Powell. And I remain squarely focused on our dual mandate to promote maximum employment and stable prices for the American people. The economy has made considerable progress toward our dual mandate objectives. Inflation has eased substantially, while the labor market has remained strong. And that is very good news. But inflation is still too high. Ongoing progress in bringing it down is not assured. And the path forward is uncertain. We are fully committed to returning inflation to our 2% goal. Restoring price stability is essential to achieve a sustainably strong labor market that benefits all. Today, the FOMC decided to leave our policy interest rate unchanged and to continue to reduce our securities holdings. Our restrictive stance of monetary policy has been putting downward pressure on economic activity and inflation. As labor market tightness has eased and progress on inflation has continued, the risks to achieving our employment and inflation goals are moving into better balance. Now, Powell was asked at a long press conference um, about what specific data points is he looking at in order to justify a rate cut uh, the reporter tried to ask him if it was wages. He was like, no, it's inflation, inflation, inflation. Here's what he said. Most importantly, we're looking at the incoming inflation data and the contents of it and what they're telling us. So that'll be, and also the, the various components. So obviously that's what we want. We want more confidence that inflation uh, is coming down sustainably toward 2%. Uh, and I mean, it, it, of course, we'll also be looking at all the other things that are happening in the economy. We'll look at the totality of the data, including everything, essentially, as we make that assessment. But the most important thing will be the inflation data that coming in. Well, are there things that you would give more weight to, like wages? Wages is one thing. We don't, our, our target is not wages. It's really inflation. We, but we would, we would look to the fact that um, wages are still coming in very strong, but but they've been wage increases. That is to say, wage increases have been have been quite strong, but they're they're gradually coming down to levels that uh, are more sustainable over time. So it's it's all it's all about inflation. Now look at how the U.S. markets uh, reacted yesterday. The S and P fall. We start with the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which is heading towards forty thousand points. That climbed by over one percent. The S and P five hundred already hit uh, an all-time high of 5,000 points this year. It's now notched another high of 5,200 points, up by 0.89%. And then you see the tech-heavy uh, NASDAQ up by 1.25%, 16,300 points. So the markets rallied m mostly on his language with respect to those expected cuts that are to come later on the year. Markets are saying perhaps it's going to be uh, June. We'll see what that is. Uh, or when that is, rather. Let's move to U.S. President Joe Biden. By the way, another bit of you, so much news today. His cash haul, I think he reported $40 million or so, uh, or was it $400? Um, in terms of campaign, what he raised in February, uh, well, $40 million. He went to the very, very important state of Arizona. Arizona is one of the swing states. Uh, in fact, it was in Maricopa County, which is a very a county that is friendly to Democrats in terms of past elections. Um, and... He and unveiled, um, there's a massive factory at Intel where you can see a picture of him and Intel CEO uh, Patrick uh, Gelsinger where they're looking at uh, chips. Uh, this is a, a chip plant that is going to be built in Arizona. And uh, uh, Intel basically got about $8.5 billion dollars from the CHIPS Act that uh, Biden already announced earlier. And in fact, that's in grants. They could get another 11 or 12 billion uh, in loans. Uh, so here's Pat Gelsinger speaking to CNBC. I was pretty excited about what this means for the company and for CHIPS as well. 
Well, we just say this is an exciting day for America. It's an exciting day for the CHIPS program. It's an exciting day for Intel. And you're behind us, the construction project alive and well, and we're moving forward rapidly. And the facilities behind us, hey, these need to come online in 2025. You know, it'll be part of our 18A, you know, our finish of our getting back to leadership. So this brings us back to leadership manufacturing for some of our key products. Also will be key for our foundry business as well. And it really is sort of the coming together of everything that we did. You know, a lot of shoe leather getting the CHIPS Act uh, passed and the eight and a half billion the additional 11 billion of loan guarantees, the investment tax credit, and then more to come with uh, defense and the uh, R&D investments. So today's a great day. It sort of is, I'll call it the end of the beginning of our journey to rebuild semiconductors in America. This is exciting. There's a political side to this, there's a business side to this. The political side, of course, is that Arizona is a swing state. It's going to be very competitive. On the business side, which you can commingle with the political side, that, um, as you saw Gelsinger uh, gesturing to the massive construction plants that was behind him, you saw the number of jobs that are projected to be um, created. What happens when you're creating, when construction workers come to a site? They need to eat. They need to do other things. So the, out, the ecosystem within there is going to benefit from them having to go buy meals, clothes, and so on and so forth. So there's going to be a, a, a ripple effect of that plant. But remember, this is the future. We, back in June, on, uh, we broke the news that Intel uh, was building a 33 billion euro plant in Germany. And they got about, I think, 12 or 11 billion euros in subsidies from the German government. We also reported here, before anyone else, uh, that uh, TSMC is building a chip plant in Japan. Japan has given TSMC about $8 billion, uh, roughly in yen, if you convert from yen, in subsidies. Now you have uh, Intel getting this from the Chips Act. They're also in Oregon, they're in Ohio, uh, Arizona. This is the future. Earlier this week, we had NVIDIA and their developer conference with the new chips that they were, uh, Blackwell, the new chip that is going to be powering your phones, your cars, this camera that is focused on me right now, the television screens you're looking at as, as everyone is watching. This is the arms race of the future. Asia, Europe, US, that, that's where everybody is going. It's all about smaller chips that have more processing capacity, the GPUs, in order to propel artificial intelligence uh, going uh, forward. Let's get to Africa now, Nigeria. Um, you, I'm not sure how many people know this, but there was a bond auction that took place. You can see the headline there on the Bloomberg terminal. Nigeria selling about 1.1 trillion naira worth of bonds due in 2027, netting the country about 700, over $700 million. If you go into a little further into the details of the bond, if you know how bond prices work, it was sold at the price of 97. That's a discount. Bonds are sold at par, which is 100. If you're below 100, you're selling at a discount. If you're selling at 100, that's at par. If you're selling over 100, you're selling at a premium. So these bonds, 19% is your coupon rate. Your YTM is your yield to maturity. If you hold the bond to maturity, 21%. The key thing here is that the details we understand, this was a private sale. It was most likely to, and maybe we'll get some more um, color from Yemi Cardoso at next week's MPC meeting, which has been announced for the 25th and the 26th, most likely to offshore investors. They get to dictate tenors and they get to dictate returns. But the key thing here is that this is part of the defense of the currency that Cardoso said that the central bank would embark on. So look at your private sale, the maturity of the bonds, uh, 2027, as you can look there on your screen. So what's the ripple effect now, as I told you about the, you know, solving for X when you use in algebra, when you're taking your known variables. For those who are wondering how the Naira has appreciated, or rather, before I get to the Naira appreciation, let's get to Carl. Uh, Vimbi already talked about this, uh, mentioned in the headlines. The FX backlog is the front page on today's This Day newspaper, Nigerian newspaper of record. The committee. Um, the central bank put, you know, saying that the valid claims of FX backlogs have been cleared. Again, the valid claims. They brought in Deloitte to audit them. If you're out there, uh, an entity that says that their claims have not been settled, bring your claims forward, let it be looked at. So that's been cleared. And so the Naira now, 
um, appreciating to about 1,400 levels. It wasn't long ago that people were wondering if the Naira would get to 2,000 and folks were all over the social media saying that the country is burning and falling down. Now it's appreciated to about 1,400, about 1,492 I think on the official market uh, NAFEX and then about 1,460 or so on the, uh, on the parallel uh, market. Also reserves as of March the 7th have risen to about 34 billion uh, dollars. What is that on the back of? We talked about higher rates for treasury bills, higher rates for bonds, higher rates for the NPR, monetary policy rates, the benchmark rate being risen. Several times I've said on the show and analyzed this for folks out there who are wondering, when you raise rates, you attract FPIs, foreign portfolio investors, into the country. They buy your securities, and so uh, that uh, goes, uh, goes up. So we are seeing a coalescing. I mean, you saw um, uh, Mela Kiari in Houston uh, at the S&P Global uh, uh, event there talking about uh, um, oil production going up talking about trying to clamp down on um, uh, oil theft. And that also ties into us being able to pump more oil, sell more, bring in more dollars on the fiscal side. On the monetary side, you've got the central bank with these special bonds, raising rates, trying to bring in. And so you're now seeing, now the question is, can this be maintained? That is the question. How much firepower um, does the central bank uh, have on that? Finally, Access Bank uh, buying uh, National Bank of, uh, of Kenya from the KCB Group. Uh, they announced this yesterday. Access Bank continues to expand its footprint. Uh, I think they have a 2027 target of raising their assets to a particular threshold outside Nigeria. Remember that Asset Access Bank did buy Transnational Bank back in 2019. So this is part of their strategy. Roosevelt uh, Ogwona put out a statement saying that, look, they've got a five-year strategy to grow their assets. That is our update for today. Well, for Access Bank, really, really very excited for Access Bank. As regards also you know, the announcement that most of the encumbrances have been cleared, it also has to be said that those are the verified claims. So, hitherto we have heard people that talked about unverified claims. We haven't talked about the process itself, and we are still looking at that. So, like you said, people that have unverified claims, let's see how that comes in. Also, yes, the Naira taking a big gain, but also when you look at the daily trades on the, um, uh, what's it called, markets, the... The, the NAFEX market, as it were, the daily highs were still topping about 1,600 and the daily lows were talking about 1,300 mark. So let's see how that, you know, starts to peter down because we really need an IRA to go back to at least a comfortable level. Since they keep saying, oh, the currency is overvalued at this rate, we need it to go back to a comfort comfortable level like it used to be before because we remember the analogy of the fair value they kept on giving us them, that if you float, you should find a fair value around the 700, 800 mark. So we need that. Also, we need to have real conversation about inflation. And that's one other thing we need to look at as, as regards the economy. How can we beat bad inf inflation? You know, the projections are not really good. In fact, best case scenarios of inflation based on some projection is about 24%, which is still really very high. Probably we need to beat back inflation to the lower, you know, 10s, maybe 12, 13, 14, 15% thereabout. Or if life is good for us, probably over the years, in the next couple of years, get back to the 9% inflation rate, the single digit CBN target inflation rate. Because now nah, inflation is so high in Nigeria, right? we, we forget in a hurry, we actually used to have a CBN targeted inflation rate of 9%, which we have long gone away from. So these are conversations we need to have, but that's a good one on the CBN. How can we push and bolster? And as regards the reserves going up, most of the monies collected in loans are also used to show up the reserves. So apart from all that, you know, buying in government securities and all of that, most of those monies are also saving reserves. So it's looking good on the reserve booklets. Right, now very quickly to Kenya, to Access Bank's uh, purchase of uh, the National Bank of Kenya from the KCB Group. Now, it, it'll be interesting to see how Access Bank work their magic to turn this bank around, because we know that KCB, for the first time in 21 years, the owner of National Bank of Kenya d uh, d paid 0%, zero percent, zero dividends last year. Uh, NC, the, the National Bank of Kenya, excuse me, has been one of their struggling assets, which hasn't made any profit whatsoever in the five years uh, that uh, it has been under their ownership. So it'll be interesting to see what Access Bank brings to the table to turn this around. Kenya is also going through a difficult time, 61% increase in operation costs, uh, as well as a depreciating currency. So banking is still a very tricky game, but uh, you know, if anybody can work their magic, let's see what the Access Bank team can do. Okay, Rotus, a number of issues. First, let's start with the Central Bank of Nigeria. The uh, lead story in this day newspaper today 
I think that's a very positive story. The other time we were talking about fertilizer, uh, I was very skeptical about interventions. But the story today is a positive one. Cardoso, CBN governor, you know, promising to re reduce FX backlog and delivering on that. I think that that's a very positive development, and I say congratulations to him. But what is important is to sustain it. The sustainability part of it is very important. Now, we were told Nigeria was uh, having about, was it seven trillion? You know, dollars uh, in terms of backlog. They got Deloitte Consulting. Seven billion dollars. Seven billion dollars. They got Deloitte Consulting to audit that. It was discovered that 2.4 uh, billion was not valid enough. They paid 2.3 a billion dollars, and then eventually they have paid all the uh, balance. I think that's an achievement uh, that can be celebrated. The second achievement that can be celebrated in Cardoso's, uh, you know, credit is the fact that now the uh, foreign reserve has gone up. You know, now 34.11 uh, billion dollars. Uh, that's quite an achievement, showing that the Tinubu administration is determined to move the country away from the nightmare of the economic mismanagement of the uh, Buhari era. Again, they have to sustain that. But the major issue in the Cardoso story that I'd like to draw your attention to is this plan to recapitalize the banks in pursuit of a $1, million, uh, trillion, one trillion dollar uh, economy that Cardoso has been talking about. Well, if they recapitalize the banks, they, we don't have the details yet. Uh, what are we going to end up with? How many banks? will be able to uh, survive. But to the extent that we have a central bank under Cardoso, now talking about an enabling business environment, uh, investor confidence, uh, you know, creating a sound, stable financial system. I think that that's commendable, you know, and uh, when they do well, we should point attention to it that they are doing well. So, and I hope that Cardoso will be consistent in focusing on his core mandates. Because that story on the front page of this day newspaper today is about the CBN focusing on its core mandate and reporting back to Nigerians about achievements, about promises that have been uh, fulfilled. A credit to the Tinubu administration. Now, very quickly. Yesterday was International uh, Day of Happiness. And officially, you know, the data on uh, how people are happy, the World Happiness Report was released. Do you know that Nigeria is number 102 out of 143? We were 95 last year. There was a year we were number one on that happiness index. We are now 102. Iran and Azerbaijan are doing better than Nigeria. A clear indication, however, of the hardship that the people are facing. And the things that I used to measure it is about social security, it's about health, it's about education, it's about perception of corruption. Those are issues that the Nigerian government will still have to deal with. Now, you talked about Jay Powell, where the Americans, uh, you know, the dot plot, the matrix, you know, uh, yes, they've, re they've retained it at uh, what they released in December. Jay Powell says, well, three courts, still possible, despite the fact that the labor market is very strong, uh, job icon is uh, on the upswing, but everything indicates, despite the 3.1 in January inflation rate, CPI, 3.2 in February, CPI, but that there is uh, a non-linear indication that inflation is going down. That's why they are sustaining you know, that dot uh, plot. And that has helped the stock market. Uh, you know, uh, S&P 500 rose 0.3%. Uh, Dow, Dow Jones Industrial Average rose about 140 points, 0.4%. And then, of course, uh, uh, NASDAQ also rose uh, about uh, 0. Uh, uh, you know, 3%, uh, 0.5% in the case of uh, NASDAQ. So, but we keep watching, you know, uh, what will happen next. And in the UK yesterday, Bank of England, Inflation also went down to 3.4%. Uh, and, uh, you know, Rishi Sunak is jubilating. Whether that will help him to solve the problems in his party uh, remains to be seen. But in the UK, you know, they are closer also to the 2% target. And the Bank of England is retaining the 5.25% uh, interest rate. Where in Nigeria here, 
the central bank is going to meet, we're told, uh, the MPC, that is, on March 25. What will the CBN come with? We'll wait to see. Thank you very much, Rotis.